Hi everyone, I'm Kim Tunders and this is Catherine and we're just going to do a quick little demo for you today. So um, I'm a public health dietitian and a Greenways board member as well as I am a mom of a two-year-old. And I'm Catherine, I'm a Greenways board member as well and also a mom of a two-year-old. <laughs> so interesting things going on in the kitchen these days. <laughs> Um, so the recipe that we're going to make today is a quiche and it is totally customizable depending on what you have in the kitchen. If you've got leftovers you need to use up, um, depending on what your kid might eat or might not eat um, or what you get in your good food box. Yeah, awesome. And so I can show you too as Catherine goes along here. I mean, maybe I'll do it now. I'll just quickly pull up this recipe blog so you can have a quick peek. But also to find it yourself, it's really simple if you just Google ambitious kitchen quiche. So it's a great, a great one. So as I'm doing that, Catherine, you can go ahead if you just want to show, show your process. Okay. So um, often a quiche will have sort of a, a biscuity or a pastry crust. Um, this one has a gluten free crust that's just yam. Yeah. Um, so I've got a mandolin. You can just slice your yam really thin with a knife if you don't have a mandolin. Uh, and then I put that into a nice big pie plate and baked that for about 20 minutes at 375. So I've done that already. So it's ready to go to put the fillings inside. Nice. Uh, oh, there we go. Yeah, and so it's it's a nice option. I, I tried this as well. And so as she moves along, I'll show you what the finished one looks like because mine's ready and baked. But um, I um, I liked the option of, of having a, of a, a sweet potato crust, another way to add veggies. And uh, it actually held together really nicely. So definitely if you like um, other crusts, it's totally cool. You could actually use this recipe and, and make a, a traditional crust too but uh, the sweet potato one's is nice too because it adds lots of vitamins there's lots of vitamin a and in, in, in sweet potatoes so that's a, a great way to boost some nutrients and i didn't bother to um peel my sweet potato mostly because i was too lazy but if you're okay with that i think there's lots of good stuff in the peel as well yeah, you can just give it a scrub and, and do it that way. That's great. I peeled mine because I didn't even think about that. But it is, I'm a proponent for using and eating peels when you can. So that's great. Keep, keep Keeps more fiber in. So. so I've had a little bit of um, white onion that I just diced and I've had on the stove for a few minutes, uh, just with a drizzle of olive oil. And I've thrown some just roughly chopped asparagus and cherry tomatoes in there. And I'm just going to cook it a little bit. It's obviously going to cook in the oven as well. So I don't need to cook it totally through. Um, but just so it softens a little bit. And I'm going to put some salt and pepper as well. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I liked that this suggested sauteing your vegetables a little bit with mine. I used onion as well. And it's nice just to caramelize it a bit. I put in a bit of fresh garlic. And then I um, also did red pepper instead of the tomato and then I put some um, some spinach in it and I just welted the spinach there at the start so it kind of cooked down and then it's easy to spread on top of your sweet potato crust before you put in the eggs. Um, and I'm going to add some diced ham to mine as well um, left over from Easter so good way to use that up. Nice. Yeah I have some in the freezer too but I did not put that in mine but that's a great idea. Next time. And Catherine, you've said you've made this before. I was worried maybe it would stick to the pie plate, but mine didn't. It was actually it came out really well. It says to grease it, and I did, but um, yeah. Yeah, I just gave mine a quick spray, but it. I was surprised actually how well it held together. Yeah. Okay, so that's probably fine for the veggies. They don't need much in there. Um, now I'm not sure how my big bowl is in the fridge with sourdough in it. So I don't have another bowl big enough to mix everything together. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. Um, but I've got some eggs, uh, six eggs, I think. Yep, six yes. eggs. Six eggs, so I'm just gonna give them a little bit of a beat and I'm gonna beat in some, I'm using regular milk because that's what we use in our house. 
Um, the recipe also says you can use almond milk or soy milk or whatever. Yeah, I like this recipe because you could cater it to all sorts of food preferences. So if say if you were avoiding dairy for intolerance, you could leave out cheese too, or you could use a dairy free cheese. Um, so yeah, you can make this recipe really f friendly and, and you could use any type of vegetable. So we've talked about some of them. I was thinking too, like if the good food box, even if you wanted to like add in things like you could uh, saute a bit of broccoli. Um, oh, I don't know if we talked about mushrooms, but I put mushrooms in mine. Yeah, so there's all sorts of all sorts of things. Whatever you have in the food box that you want to cook up and put in here would really be fine. Eggs go well with kale all. or zucchini. If you've got that in your garden coming into zucchini the summertime, that would be great too. Yeah, and yeah. kale. Um, and then I've got feta cheese. Like Kim said, if you don't, you're not into cheese, leave it out or do a, a lactose free cheese or a vegan cheese or whatever. Um, I'm just going to mix the feta into the egg so that it gets more distributed through the quiche and isn't pushed in a blob on top. And I used goat cheese in mine and that turned out well too. So it's all what you like. It's, I mean, they're both stronger. So depending, you could leave that out too. You could use cheddar. I, I thought about making mine like part one. I just made it all the same in the end, but it, it doesn't like, once you put the egg in, you could put the cheese on top. So you would have, you could do part of the quiche with one type and part with the other too. And that would work. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I did find the first time that I, oops, I'm pulling an onion. Um, the first time I made this, I used an eight inch pie plate and it was pretty full. So I've used a little bit bigger pie plate this time, but I'm still, as I look at it, a little bit worried. About I'm going to look at the bottom of my pie plate. See, I, oh, see, mine's a 14 inch. It's a big pie plate. Oh, I'm going to show my pie plate now. So yeah, this is what mine looks like when it's all finished. And uh, you can see it's actually got really nice layers with the vegetables. But yeah, it filled up my um, my pie plate pretty well. So I mean, there is room. You can see the rim is pretty, but it puffed up really nicely. And so, yeah. But I mean, part of it too is I put a lot of veggies, so that's going to take up more space too. So depending and on- it, I used a sort of normal size sweet potato and I, I did a lot of overlap as well. Okay, yeah. Um, so that filled it up a little bit. Okay, well, so you, I can, you can see the layer. My sweet potato kind of ended up, it's on the bottom, but there are a little bit of egg that as I poured it in went underneath, but that was totally fine. It still comes out of the pan nice and didn't stick, so. Okay, so there's mine all nice and full. And then I'm just gonna pour my eggs over top. So I love quiche for eggs. Eggs I feel like are very under, appreciated protein source. They're very affordable. I, they're really easily digested. I find that from a pretty early age, kids like them. This is more adventurous with the mixed texture. So if you have a really little one too, I would suggest maybe trying to put less things in or at least less in their area because sometimes they might like foods individually, but all mixed together, not so much, but you never know. It, you know your, your child, but uh, I definitely suggest offering a wide variety of foods and letting them decide what to have but um yeah eggs are really high in protein they and they uh they actually have some iron too so it's nice for for getting getting good option and they often get a bad rap for their their fat but it's actually they're they're not high in fat they just have cholesterol in them but overall um it's not so much about what you eat with cholesterol it's more your lifestyle and your how much saturated fat you get so yeah, that's good. Yeah, my daughter loves eggs, so it's nice to have a reliable protein when she's a little bit iffy about meat a lot of the time, but I know yep. if I give her an egg in just about any form, she'll eat it. Um, so I've got the eggs poured into there now, and I'm just going to throw it in an oven that's been preheated to 375. Um, and do you have the recipe in front of you still? I forget what the time. Yes, it's uh, 30 to 45 minutes. And mine took closer to the 45 minute mark, but I did start checking at 30. And um, also um, it depends too, I was thinking like I made mine where I baked my crust and then I actually didn't cook the egg until quite a long time after. So if your pan was still hot and everything was hot, oh. I think it would cook faster, but mine had been in the fridge. So I think it's a little slower, but it, it's nice. It was really obvious to me when mine was done because the recipe says it'll puff up. And like it did, it puffed up and set in the center really well. Like it went from like kind of wiggly and soft in the center to puffing up in a couple more minutes and it was it was done. So that was nice to, to see that. So, yeah. All right. 
Well, mine's in the oven and timer set. Great. Awesome. Well, I think we're all done then. Thanks everybody. Thanks so. And um, I think this is going to be posted up on the Facebook page. So feel free to comment. And if you want to ask us any questions and uh, yeah, thank you. Thanks, Kim. Bye.